Hello again from the seaside. I thought of some things I wanted to throw out real quick to help you out. That's a cool rig. Sick, dude. See? I was just going to talk about traveling. Get a cheap vehicle with lots of room. Rip out the chairs if you don't need them. It's really simple. Go to a local scrapyard. They'll give you the tools. They can sell the seats. Bye to me. Just enough for you and maybe someone else if you need them. I have two in the front just to balance. I still think about ripping that out, but I have hopes maybe I'll have somebody someday to drive next to me. So that's my romantic stupidness. But anyway, <clears throat> maintenance. When I first got this vehicle, I got everything flushed. Transmission, the you know, the radiator, everything was flushed. I flushed everything. The brake fluid, uh, the brake lines. I flushed the brake lines, everything. I didn't want to go out into nowhere. The, the tires were fine. I ended up getting a nail somewhere along the line, but that was like, you know, six months into my journey, seven months into my journey. So it was, you know, have good tires to start with. That's always a plus. Get a less swap account. That doesn't help. They're all over the place. And that's a quick way to go in and get a flat tire fixed and, you know, tire repair for free. And they do rotation and balancing for free. But anyway, so always want to think about maintenance on your vehicle. The best gas possible. I know it's expensive, but you want the best gas possible. Like I said, you want room, you want comfort. I think about this. And they have these little pods that they're selling to, to millennials as homes. You can put your pods somewhere anyway, right? I'm like, I have a pod. It's awesome. It doesn't have a shower and a bathroom. I mean, I have a pump that I use like for the sprayer, but, but it's mobile. I mean, when they come up with those pods with the, you know, you can drive around, that's, you're going to start getting smart. But you heard it here first, but anyway, that would be kind of cool. Because they have the, the sprint cars that are, they're just, I don't know. Think of it. They have like a, kind of a sprint, but have like a bubble, big ass. It'd be cool. Anyway, because those are kind of weird. And a lot of them don't, I, the worst ones are the ones that don't even have hardly any windows. And I'm like, what the hell, dude? You're going to spend all that money for a sprinter? Get freaking windows, dude. Um, I have like sick windows, dude. And it's what's cool is I noticed when it's hazy and stuff, and I close my window, I'm just looking out. The um, the tent acts as like sunglasses, so I can see clearer. I was checking out whales, checking out whales, and they were just like hanging out. It's awesome. Anyway, so yeah, travel, have a map. Hard maps are important. I get a hard map. I get a topog top topo topographic map that gives you the elevation heights and stuff like that. So if you're driving through Colorado and you end up on the million dollar highway. You get a little warning beforehand. It just looks, ugh, I'm not kidding. I drove up to the scene and it looked like the wall from Lord of the Rings where they had the fortress. I was like, how the hell am I driving? And I drove up it. And so did an RV that was freaking out. But anyway, ice. It was, I digress. So topographical maps are important. It's all, uh, and what I, another thing I always do, I tell people Google Maps. I do Google. I, re, I do a lot of reviews on Google. It's what it is. But Google Maps is important for you because it'll help you find all kinds of campgrounds. And I always tell people if you're going over an area, try to go as close as possible, but not that close. Then I always press search more than once. I move it a little bit and you search again because a lot of times Google will not pop up campsites. I've, it's done that to me. Death Valley is a great example. I went over that freaking road about five different times looking for campsites and stuff. And it showed me the, the dune area and that's it. I didn't, see, it was literally, I had, in my mind when I was driving to that place, I, I had all my, I had a full tank, I had food, I had water, I was planning on seeing a nothing land. I get in there and there's a freaking resort, like El Capone would have built, and like gas stations and campgrounds everywhere, and I was like, you sons of bitches. So you can't trust it, but at the same time, Google it more than three or four times and you'll get it. So anyway, I digress. So one other thing I wanted to talk about was my art. And a lot of times I feel like a bum sometimes when I'm spent sitting around just enjoying whales. I burn that, but at the same time I'm trying to think about work. For example, I have three paintings right now in my head that I'm painting. For example, I have backgrounds. Like this is a great example. This was the background I made for trout jumping out. I was basically fly fishing and it's really cool looking. And so I, and I was looking down into the water as I'm fishing and it's all the different rocks and the moss. It was just all distorted. 
but at the same time I was like, that'd be cool just to... So I got that one down, and then I have like another one. I want to do um, Lotus Flowers, so that's going to be a cool painting. I'm excited about that one. Plus the Angel one, I'm still working on the wing, and I'm visually doing it. It's, it's, it's almost like Jedi work, I'm telling you, because I'm, I'm like mentally in my mind painting it. And I have to try different techniques, and that doesn't work, and I have to scrap the painting and start over. I've done that. It's just it's weird. It's hard to explain. It's just, it's like mentally doing it in your mind before you do it on paper. And which is what I do, because I don't want to fuck up. And, and it helps, because it makes, they come out really good. Sometimes I get lucky, and I just dive in and say, I got to do something, and I do it, and I'm blessed. But most time, it's a lot, it's a lot of mental work, a lot of sitting there and just contemplating the painting, the process, and like I said, I'll, I'll paint something about three or four times. There's paintings that I've painted maybe six times in my head before I got it right, and then at the seventh time, it would be on laying down the paint, so... I know it seems like I'm doing nothing, but it's all mental. It's all Jedi stuff. Plus, I'm trying to give my vibe out to the energy. Because, like I said, the, the higher your vibration, the happier you are. It, it's effective. It affects the people. Just like when you walk into a room and somebody's pissed off, and next thing you know, you're, ah, you feel drained, right? And it, cause from the negativity, at the same time, if you're positive, that, that you'll light up a room. And I'm telling people, just think positive, be positive, and the world will change for you. I'm just running, like I said, I'm running on week by week, day by day right now, and I'm excited about selling my art tomorrow. I just, mostly because I took a shower and I shaved and I feel like, I don't feel like a complete scumbag. I'm, I was having a hard time just talking to people selling my art because I knew I'd ha need a really good bath. And that was a little depressing, but it's, it is what it is. I'm a gypsy nomad on the road, so, you know, I might even start throwing out tarot. When I'm painting and whatever, and I'm taking breaks, I like throwing tarot, so, I mean, not for anybody, but for me, but. Man. Anyway, love you guys. I, I still I can't wait till if I'm done with this. I don't know. This was the can this was the canvas I did that was what crayon? It was crayon and then I did acrylic on top of the crayon. I don't know. I don't know. That was just inspiration from Montana. Plus I was inspired to do the just to go back to my childhood. It's about the flying the kite and the eating rock pop rocks and you know, getting in touch with your inner child is kind of healing your inner child. They don't tell you that sometimes. So I'm telling you, what did you do as a child that you loved? Hopscotch, whatever. Fun, silly crap that you did as a kid, do it. Pop rocks are awesome. Those are fun. They come in a variety of flavors. They're bizarre, but it's, yeah, that's cool. And bottle caps were good. I was chewing on those. Red li licorice. You know, watch 80s movies. I don't know when you were a kid, whatever it was. Enjoy. Love life. Feed that inner child. Be happy again. And you'll rock it. Love and light, people. I'm out. Have a wonderful day.